Hey everyone, and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at the Aitzer L2 Laser Engraver. They describe this as the next generation of laser engravers, coming in blazing with a 36 watt diode laser, advanced movable Z axis with autofocus, positioning lasers, and even automatic air assist. But how does this no compromise next generation laser actually perform? Let's find out. Before we begin, this laser was sent to me for review by Aitzer. Like all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this laser for the last month. Let's get started. The Aitzer L2 is a benchtop diode laser engraver with a work area of 410mm by 410mm. The laser module comes in three different varieties, a 12 watt, 24 watt, and 36 watt diode. I have the 36 watt version with me today. The laser module is beefy with a large size and hefty weight. At the top of the module is a powerful cooling fan, which blows through the module, as well as the air assist hose inlet. Moving down, the first noticeable feature are the LED lights on the front, which light up according to the percentage of laser power. This is useful as a sanity check while the laser is running, so you can visually see the power level that you've set the laser to. The next noticeable feature is the large attachment on the right side. This houses the autofocus probe and positioning laser. The autofocus probe works in conjunction with the movable Z-axis, which the laser module is mounted to. The Z-axis is controlled by a motor and allows the entire laser module to be moved up and down. The autofocus probe allows you to position the laser over your material, click a button, and the laser module will lower itself until the probe touches the material. It then adjusts the laser module to be the perfect distance away from the material. The movable Z-axis is also useful for cutting thicker materials. Between each pass of a cut, you can have the Z-axis lower so that the focal point of the laser is deeper into the material. That allows you to cut thicker materials faster. The laser module also has a red positioning laser on the side. This gives a precise indication of where the laser will fire, allowing you to align cuts more accurately. I really like this feature, as it is a big step up from eyeballing the laser's position, and there's no chance of marking the surface like there is if you set the laser power to a very low percentage for positioning. Finally, at the bottom of the laser module is the orange protective cover. This gives great visibility at the laser and the materials you are engraving, while also doing a good job of blocking out reflected light. However, you should always use the included protective goggles when the machine is running. The Aitzer L2 has large aluminum extrusions for the frame, making it very sturdy and stable. This is a heavy laser weighing 25 pounds, which makes it less portable than other lasers. The X and Y axes are belt driven, and the X axis having linear rails and the Y axis using linear rods. These rails have a longer lifespan than the rubber wheels found on many other lasers, and provide very smooth motion, especially when running at high speeds. It also has six end stops, for both min and max end stops on all three axes. This means that you'll never grind the laser against the frame. On the front of the machine is the 4.3 inch full color touchscreen that magnetically attaches to the control box. The touchscreen allows you to use the laser without connecting to a computer. You can move the laser, start and stop jobs saved to the USB stick, and adjust settings like autofocus and tilt detection. The touchscreen works well and the options are nicely laid out and intuitive to use. The touchscreen connects to the control box, which has a child safety lock and key, the power button, an alarm light, and the USB stick input on the top. The side has the HDMI for the touchscreen, USB-C ports for your computer, power input, and the air assist power output. Inside the control box is a 32-bit processor with stepper motor drivers that aren't too loud. It also has built-in Wi-Fi, allowing you to connect wirelessly and control the laser using Acer's laser app or by connecting to it via a web browser. However, like my previous review of the Acer P20, I was unable to get the Acer app to find the laser even though I was able to connect to the Wi-Fi network. This might just be an issue with my particular Pixel 7, but I wasn't able to test the app. The Acer L2 also has a few more safety features built in. It includes slope detection, where it will stop the machine if it detects that it is tilted more than 15 degrees. I feel that that angle is a little too much, as I was surprised at just how far I had to tilt it to trigger the safety stop. While it would trigger if it fell off a table, it wouldn't trigger if a single leg was pushed off the edge. The L2 also has flame detection built into the laser module, which causes the laser to immediately stop. Finally, the child safety lock is a nice touch, where the machine won't turn on if the key isn't inserted. The Acer L2's assembly process was a little involved. The laser comes partially pre-assembled, with the motors and frame pieces assembled and wires nicely cable wrapped. However, you still have to screw together the frame and run the Y-axis connecting rod. This is where I ran into a small snag, as the coupler for the Y-axis motor was installed incorrectly and wasn't allowing the rod to be clamped down. I had to unscrew the coupler and adjust it to get it to fit. 
If someone hasn't worked with these couplers before, it may not be obvious what the problem was. But after fixing the coupler and the connecting rod, I could finish the assembly of the Y-axis and connect all the cables. Overall, it took me about an hour and a half to assemble. The full color instructions were nice and detailed though. The Acer L2 can use any Gerbil compatible software like Laser Gerbil or Lightburn. The manual gives detailed instructions for both on how to set up the autofocus command and the auxiliary positioning laser command. And with Lightburn, you can easily configure automatic step down of the Z axis and define which materials should and should not use the Air Assist. The Air Assist compressor is a separate unit with a matching style and purple color. On top is a knob that turns the compressor on and controls the speed. On the back is where the hose to the laser module connects as well as the power input. By plugging the power into the L2's control box, this allows the laser to turn on and off the air assist in the G-code. You cannot programmatically change the airspeed, that can only be adjusted by turning the knob, but you can, for instance, tell Lightburn to use the air assist for wood and not for acrylic. The air assist itself is very powerful and does an excellent job at clearing away smoke. And speaking of smoke, this laser makes a lot of it. The 36 watt laser is one of the most powerful diodes that I've tested. I was cutting through an eighth of an inch birch plywood at 800 millimeters per minute. At those speeds, you need good ventilation with the amount of smoke being produced. The cuts through the wood were very consistent, with consistent black edges and little discoloration on the surfaces. The automatic step down helps when cutting through thicker pieces like this half inch basswood. My kerf test showed a kerf offset of 0.11 millimeters. That is a pretty large dot size for the laser, which could affect its engraving quality. My engraving test came out pretty decent, but if you need very detailed engravings, you might need to spend more time dialing in the settings. Slate engraving worked well with the laser able to easily ablate away the material. This is still one of my favorite materials to work with. Diode lasers cannot cut clear acrylics, but this black acrylic works very well. I had a mishap with a positioning laser, which I'll talk about in a bit, and accidentally cut through a few of these keychains. But the engraving is nice and consistent, and the edges are smooth. Leather also works great, with the Air Assist doing an excellent job of preventing soot from discoloring the edges. And it's more of the same story with these aluminum business cards, with consistent engravings at faster speeds, due to the more powerful laser. And finally, let's talk about stainless steel. With more powerful lasers, by adjusting the power and line interval, you can get colorful oxides to form on stainless steel. The Acer L2 gave beautiful blues, purples, oranges, and browns, in addition to blacks and grays. This can be a game changer when it comes to creating unique stainless steel jewelry. Now I did run into a couple of issues during my testing. The first issue I ran into almost immediately was where Lightburn would outright crash in the middle of most jobs. It would throw a core panic error and stop immediately. Acer's support indicated that it was a communication issue with the laser, and it turned out to only happen when I was using the USB-C port on my laptop. When I switched to using a USB-A port, I never experienced the issue again in the rest of my testing. I cannot tell if it was a light burn issue or my laptop's USB-C port issue, but if your core starts to panic, try a different port. My second issue is with the auxiliary position laser. In the instructions, Acer has you create a macro that calls an internal command to move the laser over to where the targeting laser is positioned. It works fine, but you have to remember to click that macro button before you start a job. I thought that was strange, since Lightburn has a position laser offset built in, and it takes care of doing all those calculations for you. So I used Lightburn settings and it never let me down, until I saved the G-code to the USB and used the touchscreen for offline engraving. In that case, using Lightburn's position offset will conflict with the touchscreen's auxiliary position settings. With both enabled, it will then move double the offset when you start a job. However, if you disable the auxiliary position in the settings, then the go to center or go to corner commands in the touchscreen don't work and will mess up the positioning. My recommendation is if you are just using Lightburn, then use the built-in offset settings. However, if you plan on using the touchscreen often, then get used to the auxiliary position macro workflow. Finally, I think the marketers are out of control when it comes to claimed speeds. On their website, Acer markets speeds up to 54,000 millimeters per minute. To be fair, the L2 did very well on my speed tests, however I was only able to get it up to 25,000 millimeters per minute engraving speeds before it maxed out. Any higher values seem to keep making the same speed as 25,000 millimeters per minute. But 25,000 millimeters per minute is still half of the 24,000 millimeters per minute on the marketing. So in conclusion, I think Acer is correct in calling this a second generation laser. The moving Z-axis and autofocus is a game changer if you cut thicker materials or more varied materials. The automatic air assist is very helpful. I know I've sometimes forgotten to turn on air assist until partway through a cut before. And the positioning laser is much more precise than eyeballing the location, 
which could mean less material wasted between cuts. The cohesive purple styling gives a pleasant appearance, seeing that even the air assist and touchscreen kept the same styling motif shows that a lot of thought and care went into the design. The 36 watt diode is incredibly powerful, with the fastest cutting speeds of any diode laser that I've tested so far. The larger laser size doesn't make it ideal for high detailed engravings, but it does a decent job at an amazing speed. While the assembly process was a little painful, the machine itself was a joy to use and would find a happy home in any shop. The L2 also works with many of Acer's existing accessories, like the rotary attachment, fume enclosures, and honeycomb panels. So let's talk price. The Acer L2 36 watt is a premium laser, and for that you will be paying a premium price. It's currently on sale for $1,330 US dollars. If you don't need the power of the 36 watt laser, but you still want the other features of the L2, then the 24 watt version is $1,050 US dollars, and the 12 watt version is $900 US dollars. If you are a hobbyist just dipping your toes into laser engraving, you might not need all of the features that the L2 provides. However, if you are in a position where time is money, the pure speed of the L2 would make it a worthwhile investment. So, thank you all for watching my review of the Acer L2 36 watt laser engraver. What is your favorite feature of the L2? Was there anything that you think it's missing? Let me know in the comments below. And if you are in the market for ultra powerful diode lasers, why not check out my recent review of the WizMaker 36 watt laser? It might be just what you're looking for. So, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.